Okay, it's time to do Job 35. Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidest my righteousness is more than God's? For thou saidest, What advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? Um, so I, I said here, interesting how the whole dynamic of the argument changes if one factors in a future life. Sure, it may be the case that the wicked prosper here, but surely the cleansing of sins matters a great deal as we transition between realms. And I, I think bef because this conversation is going on between Elihu and Job trying to debate, you know, who benefits from our 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 oppression or our righteousness in a temporal scheme, they obviously don't have access to the concepts of, uh, or at least a robust understanding of what a resurrection and afterlife would look like and how the remittance of sins is necessary for that. Verse four, I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? If thou be as righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? So again, whether we are good or evil, none of it adds or subtracts from God. No amount of... I, my understanding is no amount of evil or no amount of righteousness affects God. So that's a that's that's a really interesting theological concept. I'm not disagreeing with it, but if I had someone to dialogue with here, I think we would get lost in a conversation about that for like an hour. Verse 8. Thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the son of man. Okay, so can affect men, but not God. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the alm. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. I think one way that this could be interpreted is that uh, they could be delivered of their oppression if they would cry out to God for deliverance but they don't. Verse 10, but none saith, where is God my maker who giveth songs in the night? Who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven? There they cry, but none giveth answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. I think what Elihu is saying here is uh, Job, you got to be patient. Judgment is coming on your case. Verse 15, but now because it is not so, he hath visited in his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain. He multiplieth words without knowledge. <clears throat> 